Hi, I'm Tom Greenwood. I've just finished tracking an album with Wishbone Ash, which I'm about to start mixing. AMS Neve have kindly lent me a pair of their 2264A compressor limiter modules for lunchbox format, which I'm going to give you a quick video demonstration of, show you their features and run some sounds through them so you can hear what they can do. The 2264A compressor limiter was originally introduced by Neve in 1974. It was available as part of the channel strip in their consoles and also as an outboard unit. A similar design was subsequently used in the 33609 stereo limiter compressor. For the lunchbox version of the 2264A, AMS Neve have gone back to the original design and completely recreated it absolutely faithfully. So we have the same fully discrete Class AB circuitry throughout, the same three custom hand wound transformers and importantly the same unique diode bridge compression circuit which really imparts a punchy and unique sound. I'm going to give you now a quick overview of its features and then we'll get into what it actually sounds like. So here we have the unit. As you can see we have three dual concentric controls each of which has a push switch in the center. Um, so they've managed to pack an awful lot of functionality into the obviously limited space of the 500 series format. Looking at its features from top to bottom Firstly, we have the gain reduction meter. Um, it's a very nice meter. The only thing of note is that on the original units, um, the VU meter didn't really register any compression until you got round about 4 dB or so. Um, so this is nice in that they've added a 2 dB step. You can really see when you're compressing even very lightly. Below that, we have the controls for the limiter. So on the outer control, we have the recovery time, which spans from 50 milliseconds to 800 and then two auto recovery modes. On the inner control, we have the limiter threshold. The push switch is limiter in and out. Below that, we have the compressor. So again, it's recovery for the compressor on the outside, ranging from 100 through to 1500 milliseconds and two auto recovery modes. Threshold for the compressor is on the inside control and then compressor in and out on the push switch. Below that, we have ratio for the compressor ranging from 1.5 to 1 through to 6 to 1 and then we have the makeup gain on the inner control the bottom two controls here well this one is bypass that's a full hardwire bypass that links the input to the output um, so that's a useful thing to have and then next to that we have an added feature um, that's exclusive to the lunchbox um, 2264a and that's a slow attack mode. So the original 2264A had a one fixed attack speed, which on the compressor was three milliseconds, um, which is, you know, as compressors go very fast. So that's great for tracking, um, great for when you really want to clamp down on a signal, but it's not particularly good for subtle compression or compression of a stereo group. So some people used to get their units modded um, and so in the testing and um, development of this module, AMS Neve decided to add the slow attack functionality. This is clever in two ways. Firstly, um, the most obvious thing is it increases the attack time on the compressor to 12 milliseconds, which gives it a very different sound. It's much more forgiving. And to me, 12 milliseconds is more or less ideal for, um, for bus work, for, for the stereo mix. Um, what it also does is add a high pass filter to the side chain at, 85 hertz with a gentle 6 dB per octave roll-off. Um, now what that means in practice is you can compress full range material and it won't pump with the bass, it will compress in a much more musical way. So um, it's a really nice function to have. It basically gives you, you know, twice the amount of uh, versatility that you have versus the original unit. So having explained all that, um, I'm gonna play some different sounds through the units so you can hear what they can do. Um, I'm going to be probably a little bit more heavy handed with the compression than I would do in practice, but I just want you to hear how they work. Okay, so I'm going to get some drums going here. Um, I've got a kick drum to start with. Um, it's just a plain sounding kick drum, just as it was recorded, flat with no EQ. And um, I'm going to try some different settings on the compressor just so you can hear what it can do. So um, it's switched in, so I'll put the compressor on and um, just with that little I guess we're getting about 4 dB at most there on the odd peak it really I'll switch it out 
them back in. Put the makeup up a little bit. I, you know, that really evens out the dynamics and it will make it easy to pocket it in the mix. Um, I think with a little EQ that would sit nicely. So just to show you the range of different sounds you can get from this unit, I'll, uh, I'll make some adjustments here. So if we bring the threshold round, get a lot more compression happening. I'll bring the makeup up. Now that's obviously quite a silly amount of compression, uh, 16 dB or so, I think well, a little bit more. But you can hear it's very, very musical. It's a very smooth, cool sound really. Um, if we bring the release down, it'd be a little less pumpy. And actually, that's the sound that could really work, you know, to say that's 16 dB of compression. So um, this is also a good sound to show the slow attack function because it'll be quite obvious, um, both in terms of the slower attack and the high pass in the side chain. So if I switch that in, well, obviously we're getting less compression, um, primarily because it's not reacting to the low end as much. Um, so we could use this if we wanted to emphasize the smack of a kick drum, but leave the sustain alone somewhat worse, you know, with a slower attack and the, the high pass, um, it's letting that ring more. So let me bring the threshold up a little bit. And you hear how much we're getting of the, the beta there. I'll just make that a little quieter. Take that out of bypass. You see, it's a lot, I mean, it's obviously a little softer as well, but there's much less attack. We switch that back in. So there we've taken a kick drum that didn't really have that much impact. And by using the slow attack, um, yeah, we're really beefing that up. And then if we wanted it to sound a little more pumpy, we could bring the release down. So yeah, that's, uh, that's it on the kick drum, I think. Okay, so from the same kit, um, I'm gonna play some snare drum. Um, again, just this is just the close mic, uh, just completely flat. So show you the kind of range of options we've got on this compressor. So let me engage the compressor. That's just my threshold and just bring the makeup a little bit. So that's a little bit too much probably, but you can really hear how it's absolutely clamping onto the dynamic of the snare drum. It's evening it out, which is what you'd want in a mix usually, especially for rock like this, but it's not killing the attack. Um, it's really giving you a lot of punch, a lot of smack, which is personally what I want from my, my close mic. So that's without and that's back in. Yeah, I like it. So. I probably, that's on a six to one. Let me bring it down to four to one, see how that sounds. I think I like that more. But to me, it's just a really recognizable classic sound, you know, like that just sounds like a, a rock snare drum to me. Um, if I put the slow attack on, it's gonna be completely different. We're getting less compression if I adjust the threshold. You'll hear how now that's obviously from the slower attack, it's letting more of the uh, initial thwap through and we're hearing more, the, more of the sustain too. So it's probably not a setting I'd use that often on snare drum, but it's really nice to have such a radically different option. Now I'll also show you on the snare the, the limiter. So we can have both engaged at once. Actually, the way it was designed, it was designed for one to be used or the other, but you can use them both at the same time with good results. Um, and it's quite intelligent in that they both share the same gain reduction circuit. And after a certain level, the limiter basically takes over. So the limiter is boss. So for low level compression, that'll be the compressor doing it. For the high peaks, the limiter will be doing it. And it, it's a really nice musical sound. So engage the limiter.
can hear that's absolutely not moving. Now that's, for this snare it's a little bit too much, but what's impressive to me with this unit is just kind of how good it sounds regardless of what you do. Like you could kind of twist the knobs randomly and it always gives you something interesting and musical. Um, so the limiter is an absolute brick wall, it's 100 to 1. So you can hear that snare drum is basically just not moving. So if you've got an inconsistent drummer, um, which isn't the case here, but you know if you've got an inconsistent drummer, a bad one, and you really want to just have a consistent backbeat in the mix, this really gives you that. Obviously that's a lot quieter, but um, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty impressive punchy sound, I think. So that gives you an idea of some of the range of sounds you can get on on snare drum with this. Okay, so um, now I'm going to get some full drums going. So this is again the, the same kit, just as it was recorded, um, and just show you what this could do on the drum bus. So start by inserting the compressor. So that's that's a pretty sensible amount of compression, really. Uh, possibly a little bit much, but it's uh, that's in auto release mode. So it's really evening out the dynamics, it sounds pretty smooth, um, you know, it's a, it's a nice sound. If we want to get that classic sort of in-your-face pumping drum bus sound, which can work nice on its own or in parallel, um, we don't want to be in auto mode, we want a quick release, so let me put this to the quickest. And you can hear that starting to get quite aggressive now, it's a pretty cool sound. So the nice thing about the, the Dio Bridge Compressor is the heavier the gain reduction you get, the more harmonic distortion you get. Um, and it always sounds very musical. I mean, as I showed you before, you can really get, you know, 16, 20 more of, uh, of compression. And it, it's, it never falls apart. In that sense, it's completely unlike any plugin I've used. Um, I mean, as I sort of mentioned before, I keep coming back to this feeling that I just can't really get a bad sound out of it. Um, so, this is with, we're maybe hitting 8 dB of gain reduction, and now I'm going to put the limiter in. So I'm just reducing the threshold there a little bit to get a little less limiting. Now this sounds great in this section. Not so much with the cymbals are washy, but what you can really hear there is the compressor's doing most of the work and the limit is just stopping the peaks. So that's a little idea. I mean, you could really get any number of sounds on the drum bus with this, ranging from just this smooth kind of glue to in your face uh, squashed room mic madness which you could blend in under parallel but it always sounds musical and, and sort of warm and pleasant so um, yeah that's it for drums I think. So I'll show you a little bit of compression now on some vocals. Uh, this is a live recording of uh, Paper Beat Scissors so it's a really nice sounding vocal. It's a touch too dynamic, generally, it needs a little bit of compression uh, later on in the song. But we don't always want to use compression necessarily just to control dynamic range. In a sense, sometimes that's better to do with the fader, with automation. Um, it's as much for the, um, for the changes to the tone and to give a little bit of weight. So I think just putting, putting the compressor in the circuit, well, let me put the level up a little bit and then I'll show you. So this is me switching it in. Now there's no compression hat there, but I think instantly there's a little more weight to the sound. Um, a little, little more warm. I, I like it, so let me try putting a little bit of gentle compression. So something like this, we definitely don't want to hear pumping. We don't want to hear the compressor working because it's, you know, wants to sound natural. So I'd probably use two to one or three to one. Stop. What was I supposed to say? I'm just 
adjusting the threshold. We did and didn't say covered up by what And then I'm using the second auto release mode. Um, which is pretty invisible for stuff like this, which is what I want in this instance. Every out I hear stick to so I'll just turn the vocal up a little more so you can hear it. Like all the things we did and didn't say covered up by what we did and did and did. So I'll play that again with it in bypass. In an ugly shade, all the things we did and didn't say. So I think you can hear the compressors. It's controlling the dynamics a little bit and also adding a nice uh, sort of gloss to the sound. In an ugly shade, all the things we did and didn't say. Covered up by what we did and did and did. So that's one way we could use the compression on a vocal. At the other end of the spectrum, for like a screaming rock vocal, it's especially good at holding um, holding a singer's level in the mix constant. Um, and you know, for, for music like that, any heavy lifting you probably would want to do with automation and. Um, sorry, the, say the acoustic music, music like that, you'd want to do the heavy lifting with automation and the compression's more for, for tone and just small degrees of shaping. But for rock music, heavy compression on a vocal is very much part of the sound. And with the compressor and the, the uh, limiter engaged on this, it can really hold a, uh, a vocal in place in the mix. So maybe that's something I'll do in another video.